Welcome back to another Python project. In today's video we're going to be making a simple encryption system. So this isn't going to be anything too fancy, but what it's going to do it's going to take a key value which will be a number and then shift letters by the key value. So for example if I type the letter A into my program, my program has a key value of 5 so it's going to shift the letter A five letters to the right. So I'll end up with A goes to B, C, D, E, F would be the fifth one. So when I run the program, it'll encode my message, the letter A, into the letter F. Instead of just single letters, I can also do whole words or whole messages. So let me go ahead and run, rerun my program. Okay, and this time I'm going to encode the word Python. And what it does for each letter in Python, it will shift the letter five letters to the right. So it'll shift P to the letter U. And then we'll take a look and see why Y ended up with this character. But basically this is what it's going to look like. We'll work on the encryption system first. And then next we'll work on a decoder where we can take our encrypted message and then try to decode it back to the original message which would be Python. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in and see how we can code this in Python. Okay, so probably the hardest part of this project is going to be trying to figure out how we can take a letter and shift it to the right. So for example, how do I take the letter A and shift it to the right 5 to get to the letter F? So in my head that's easy. I can just count from A 5 to the right and say the letter F, but how do we write that as a program? We're going to be taking a look at that in just a second, but before that there's a couple easy parts of this program that we can knock out right away. The first thing we're going to do is get information from the user. So we're going to be asking them to enter a message that we will be encrypting. So let's go ahead and make a variable called message. And this is going to be equal to input. And the prompt for the user, we can just type something like enter a message. And just to test to make sure this is working, let's go ahead and do a simple print function with a variable message inside. So what this is going to do, we're going to be asking for information, so we're going to say enter a message, and then we're going to print out that message just to make sure it's working the way we expect it to. All right, let's go ahead and run the program. So it says enter a message, I'll enter the message Python, and press enter, and it prints off the word Python, so I know it's working. Going back to the code now, let's go ahead and delete this since we know it's working, and let's go ahead and make our key value variable. So all we're going to say is key is equal to, and let's go ahead and start with the number 3. And remember the key value is going to be the number of times it shifts to the right. So if I start with the letter A, it will shift it 3 letters to the right. The next thing we're going to do to be able to do this for each individual letter of the word, I have to use a for loop. So I'm going to say for i in, and what I'm going to be looping through is whatever input the user gives me which is stored in message. So I'm going to say for i in message and just to make it a little bit more clear instead of the letter i let's go ahead and say letter. So for letter so for each individual letter in message I need to figure out what I need to do with this letter. So how do I take the letter and shift it to the right? So there may be a couple different ways of doing this you might think I can make a list of all the different letters and then I can just add to the index. So if I start with the letter A at index 0, I can add 3 to the index and then return that letter. So that's definitely a possibility. An easier way to do this would be using the ASCII values of the letters. And all the ASCII values of the letters are are just the number version of it. So the computer can understand the letter A as a particular number. And once we have it at a number, then it's easy to add another number to it and then convert it back into a letter. So the overview of this project, we're going to be taking a letter, we're going to convert it to its ASCII value, which will be a, a number, we'll be adding that key value to it, and then returning from a number back to the letter. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable called ASCII value. 
and this is going to be equal to and there's a function that converts strings into ASCII values and that function is ORD and what I'm taking will be the letter that I'm working on so letter and this letter comes from the string that the user gives me so for example if they give me the string Python then the first time this loops through letter will be equal to P so down here on this line what I'm doing is I'm saying take the letter P and convert that into the ASCII value the next thing I need to do is add the key value to this so I'm gonna say ASCII value is going to be equal to ASCII value plus key so in this part letter will be a string after it converts it to the ASCII value it'll be a number so what I'm doing down here is I'm taking the ASCII value and adding the key value to it and let's go ahead and stop at this point and take a look at an ASCII value chart so that we have a better understanding of what I'm talking about so this is a chart of different ASCII values so let's go ahead and locate the lowercase a so that's right over here it has a ASCII value in decimal of 97 so if I were to take this letter A and add 3 to it, which is my key, so it would take 97, add 3, and that'll bring me to 100. The ASCII value for 100 corresponds to the letter D, so it'll return the letter D as my encrypted letter. Another example, if I take the letter P with a key value of 5, so the ASCII value for P is 112. If I add 5 to that, I get down to 117, so it's going to return the letter U, like we saw in the original program. You can find these ASCII tables online. All you have to do is just type ASCII table value, and you'll get something that looks like this. This might be useful if you're trying to debug your system. You can check what it should be with these ASCII values and the corresponding letters. Let's go ahead and hop back to the code and continue. So what I need to do next is figure out how I can convert this number back to a letter. To do that, what I'm going to say is new letter. And this is going to be equal to CHR, which stands for character. And then I'm going to pass in the ASCII value. Just like that. Okay, so this line right here is converting the letter into a number based on the ASCII value. The next line down here, it's taking the number that we just got from the letter and adding 5 to it. Oh, excuse me. In this case, our key is 3, so it would be adding 3 to it. This line down here is taking the ASCII value and converting it back into a letter. So what we'll do is let's go ahead, once it's done with that, let's just go ahead and print new letter so there's one more thing we need to add to this code to be able to handle uh, entire words so for now we're just going to test individual letters so let's go ahead and run our program we saw before if we have the letter a with a key value of three it should return the letter d so let's go ahead for our first test let's go ahead and make sure that part is working Okay, enter a message, let's try the letter A, and then fingers crossed, we get the letter D back. All right, awesome, so it's working. Let's go ahead and do a few more tests, though. So running back to our chart here, let's start with the letter H, and see if we get to the letter, so H has 104, so down to 107, I should get the letter K back. Okay, if I start with the letter H, then I get the letter K back running back to the program. Let's go ahead and change our key value now to let's say 10. And if we start with the letter A, which is 97, adding 10 to it will bring us to 107 and it should bring us to K. Let's test that out. So typing in the letter A, I get the letter K. So it seems like everything's working. So let's go ahead and add that last bit of code to it to get our program working. 
So what we need to do is print out each individual letter. If I try to do it this way, Let's see what happens. So what I'm doing at the end here is I'm just printing out the letter. And if I try the word Python, then it prints it in a vertical line here, which I don't really want. I want it to print in a horizontal line just like the original word here. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a comma and then say end is equal to and then just two parentheses. So by default, the print function will return a new line. So to make it where all the letters print together, we're going to use this part right here. So end equals and then just two quotation marks. All right, let's go ahead and try it and see what happens. So this time I'm going to try an entire word. So let's try the word hello. And I get this message back here, which is the encrypted version of hello. So this would be something fun to do if you want to pass messages. You can have this program encrypt a message, send this encrypted message to your friend, and they would have to know the key value. And if they do know the key value, which in this case is 10, then they can look on the chart and just go to the left this time by 10. So what I mean by that, let's just take the letter R and let's go back to the chart and we're going to shift it back 10 and see if we end up with the letter H. So the letter R on the ASCII value chart corresponds to the number 114. So shifting back will be a subtraction. So if I subtract 10 from it, I'll get to 104, which indeed is the letter H. Okay, so I think this will be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be working on the decoder, which will allow us to take an encrypted message and then convert it back into the original text. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one.